Hey folks, and welcome to episode 2 of Under the Oak Tree Explained, right? In uh, this particular series, what we're doing is taking an in-depth look at my process um, of creating the recent EP, Under the Oak Tree. Um, If you want to take a look at um, what that EP sounds like, you can find it on uh, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, uh, wherever you shop for your music, right? Uh, So just like episode one, uh, we're going to take a look at the track. We're going to listen to it in its entirety, and then we're going to analyze the track in depth, right? So let's go ahead and press play, and we'll see you back in a second. Hey folks, and welcome to episode two of uh, Under the Oak Tree. Hey folks, welcome to episode two of Under the Oak Tree Explained. So what we're doing here is taking an in-depth look at my process and how I created uh, a most recent EP called Under the Oak Tree. Uh, You can find it at Apple Music, Spotify, anywhere that you shop or stream your music. Right. So just like in episode one, uh, we're going to listen to the track in its entirety. And then we're going to pick it apart, and analyze it and things like that. Uh, For those of you who are wondering, um, my DAW of choice is Studio One. uh, And that's what I like to use. Um, So, yeah. Let's uh, take a listen to it, then we'll pick it apart, and we'll go from there.
track was entitled Make Your Mark. I uh, apologize for uh, not naming the track beforehand. Um, also, an apology uh, for any clicks or pops that you may have heard um, doing that playback. Uh, you're hearing that because I am uh, doing uh, my capture software and this session at the same time. Um, so it's not the music, it is because I am doing a lot with my computer, and I apologize for that. Uh, but let's pick this thing apart. Obviously, you can see here I am using a lot of uh, Spitfire Labs um, for this particular um, for this particular EP and this particular song. Um, and honestly, just Spitfire Labs just works. Like um, <laughs> they just work. They they make it easy for people to use their stuff. Um, they're reasonably priced, even though some people may say they're a little expensive, but um, yeah, I, I think they're worth it. And honestly, labs, if you're really just getting started, uh, labs is completely free. You just download the necessary components to put on your computer and then you're pretty much on your way. Um, so let's look at it. I do have, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven instances of labs. Um, I have one instance of contact and I have one instance of the play engine by uh, East West. Um, those of you who aren't using East West um, for Composer Cloud, you are missing out. All right, so let's pick this apart. Um, first thing you hear here is uh, technically ostinato. <laughs> You guessed it, I am using the soft piano again. So you'll see that soft piano come up in every track um, that belongs to Under the Oak Tree. Um, so coming in right after that, it's going to be the granular whirly. Right? And if I just solo that real quick. It's just really dreamy, right? Now, something that I did here, I just basically copied a, a second instance of that whirly. Um, so it's two instances in the lab, and, but it's the same instrument. Um, and the reason why I did that is because um, I have this particular um, uh, MIDI clip mimicking the ostinato while carrying um, the melodic content as well. Uh, so it's really more so for texture um, than it is um, in the first section here. The first section is just melodic content. atmospheric sound that you're hearing throughout the track right so um after that you're hearing um that is the long strings um in spitfire audio's labs um again they are completely free so please go get them because it is a great resource to just start writing Also, I have uh, the horns coming in and through contact and pull up that instrument for you. So I um, I did something I don't normally do here, um, and it turned out to be fantastic. Um, I have um, the 
uh, Symphonic uh, Symphony Essentials. Um, they are by Audio Bro, um, who is being promoted through Native Instruments. Uh, so if you want to go check those guys out and say thank you for creating awesome libraries, then by all means do that. Um, but in their solo brass, uh, they have the horn section here. Um, and so I pretty much left the settings as they come in the box, um, but I did activate the legatos. And the reason why I did that is because um, I also coupled it with the horns essential. Uh, it's all in the same pack, except the horns uh, essential is, is, is an ensemble pack. Uh, so you have a horn ensemble on top of a solo. So it gives a really smooth sound uh, that I honestly was not expecting. Um, and so while you have one section, which I don't know how many players there are in, in the section, um, but you have a whole section that's running the same melodic content as a solo horn player. Um, it, it gives uh, an accent to the, the melodic content that, um, I, like I said, I just didn't anticipate happening. <laughs> Now, if you're if, if you're looking at my mixer and you're seeing again that there's nothing here, um, it just goes to show you that these libraries have made really, 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 really great instruments, and they're worth investing in. Uh, so honestly, the the only thing that I have going here on the horn section is um, the room, right? Um, that's really all you hear. Um, I don't think I have, nope, don't have any reverb there, um, on the ensemble. Um, uh, no, don't have any, uh, built-in reverb going on there. Uh, so also for those of you who don't know, if you're running Symphonic Essentials, you actually do have control over microphone positions. Uh, it doesn't read as a microphone position, but it actually is. So you have attack, release, tightness, and vibrato here for the brass specifically, right? Uh, if you move this release button, your re this particular release section is equivalent to the recording of the room so if you want to pull back some uh some room noise to add your own reverb and create your own space um then that's the best way for you to do it um and um you'll see in the future where i have uh some of this pulled down and it gives a tighter sound actually i'll just i'll just do it now um Let's let's activate this. Right, you hear that tail, and the, I, you saw earlier in the mixer. I, I have nothing on it, absolutely nothing. There's nothing there. So, but you're still hearing a tail. So. So if let me let me. Let me solo the ensemble real quick. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this release down. Maybe about there. And I'm going to pull the attack up just a little bit. And now listen to it. It just stops, right? So what you're hearing in in this track, Making Mark, you're hearing the recording of the room, which sounds phenomenal, right? Okay, uh, that's my that's my little spill on that. Um, and then you can do other types of stuff, but I, 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 maybe I'll make another video on a tutorial about this. Um, but 
uh, let me not um, go too far out of what this video is supposed to be about, right? Um, beautiful tail there right and so then we come into our very next section modulation whole step modulation okay um it just works and then backing out out of the dynamic just a little bit um yeah backing out of the dynamic just a little bit it gives a, a sense of um um, um, trajectory if you will right so you're moving forward in the trajectory in a new key and, 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 and it, it balanced out what was happening with the melodic and um, chordal content before So we have new material here, right? So um, two things that I, that I felt as if brought the track out a little bit more um, were some low end, uh, well, three things really, uh, some low end, some uh, choir, and a solo voice, right? So this is from the play engine. Um, Listen to that beautiful tale. Um, but this is from the play engine. This is uh, Wales. Uh, the, uh, the Voices of Passion, uh, Wales. Uh, I can't remember whether it is. Um, you know what? Let's just pull it up. <laughs> um, the only thing about play engine, it takes a while to load. Um, so I may have just shot myself in the fit, but anyway, um, it is the, uh, whales, um, instrument. It's very, it's very, uh, intimate. It's, uh, not so much in your face, uh, but the idea of, of pulling this out was to bring, um, really introduce some harmonics. Here we go. Oh, a lie. No, I'm correct. Here we go. Yeah, it is the whale's vo uh, vowels elements. Okay, and that's really all you need. You don't, you don't need hard consonants or anything like that. Um, and I also did uh, the choir. Uh, and in labs, uh, the cool thing about labs is that this choir is a broken down version of the Eric Whitaker choirs. Um, if you are unfamiliar with who Eric Whitaker is, uh, please go figure out who he is uh, because he makes some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, choral music. Um, and it's stuff that um, it's not like the traditional, whoa, 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 you know, and it makes you fall asleep, even though he does have a song called Sleep. Um, anyway, so let's just take a listen at his, um, his choirs. Listen to that. Oh my God. Okay. Um, and if you couple that with uh, the whale solo voice. <laughs> 
Um, and somewhat of the um, harshness with the brass and then to put it with some sweet overtones of a voice um, is uh, I thought uh, was pretty heavenly so um, we're almost done here um, but let's just uh, finish out the track oh and I had um, some low end uh, going here and that's just basic string ensemble right um, and just playing a little bit now um, to speak about um, some things that Spitfire does they have a tendency to pan their instruments according to the um, orchestral uh, seating chart right uh, like a, a traditional orchestra where um, the basses would be sitting in this case. Um, so I have it pulled up. Um, right, you have them sitting. And then you got violas and violins that are kind of sitting in the middle, right? Um, but yeah, so let's listen to the end here again. <laughs> the end of the track a uh, very simple ending just to kind of make a final statement for the piece all right folks so this concludes the uh episode two of uh under the oak tree explained uh if you want to see more content like this don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like the video uh if you subscribe then you'll definitely see any content that i might put out and uh if you really 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 like what's happening here then make sure you go ahead and click that bell so that you'll get notifications uh whenever something's posted uh if you uh, like something that you see, uh, you got a comment about something that was on uh, this particular episode, go ahead and leave a comment down below and uh, I'll be sure to look at the comments and see what you guys are talking about. Um, and if you want to ask me any questions, then by all means, drop them in the comments and I will do my best to get back to you promptly. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in and we will see you on the next episode.